Hola and welcome back. I hope you had a chance to listen to episode two where I share my reason for starting this podcast. Today I'm excited to share our first interview that we did way back in March of 2020 before COVID was a thing. Uh, We've had to pivot a little bit since then. If you watch the video interview on YouTube, you'll see that my hair is a different color. You'll see my makeup is on 100. Shout out to Melissa from 312 Glam here in Chicago who beat my face and got me ready como una artista and I was walking around the house pretending I was one until the camera started rolling. And I don't know if you'll be able to see how nervous I was, but my hands were sweating, um, my face was twitching. Yeah, you'll probably be able to see. But I'm so glad that my first interviewee was my friend Isa. She is a doula. She's the founder of an amazing organization here in Chicago called Chicago Latina Moms and an all-around awesome human. So enjoy my first interview recorded almost a year ago back in 2020. Hi, I'm Karina and I'm so glad that you're watching this video. I am so thankful for the stories that I get to tell. If you don't know me, I am Karina. I'm a photographer in the Chicago area. I go to Mexico and I take pictures of Mexican cities and tell their stories. And so now I am so excited to be able to actually communicate and talk to other people, other women who are, who have empowering stories of their own to share. And today's guest, I am so excited to have her on. I'm so excited to talk to her. She is my friend and we met through social media. We live in this age of Instagram and we are so connected through a tiny little app, but those connections can be so powerful. And so I'm so excited to introduce Isa. She is a doula. She is the founder of Chicago Latina Moms, an amazing group in the Chicago area and she's also a mom. And so I'm so excited to talk to her today. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me, I'm so excited. (laughs) I'm so proud of you too. (laughs) Oh, thank you. I am so proud of what you are building and the lives that you are touching every single day. Um, Why don't you walk me through like how you started with your businesses? Yeah, so um, when I was pregnant um, with my first son, Rafa, I was, I was really emotional, like most people are when they're pregnant, but um, what made me emotional was um, being here in Chicago, what felt kind of alone. My dad is the oldest of 12 brothers and sisters and they're all in Mexico. And so, and I love my family so much and I was just like, oh, I'm building a family without my family, you know? So I was looking for um, a community of Latino families and so I, started up something that I thought we would just get together um, and has grown to be something more and then through Chicago Latina moms and helping other moms through their pregnancy um, and their early postpartum I realized maybe I should be a doula and get you know trained properly for something I was kind of already doing. Yeah so how long have you been doing uh, the doula Work. Yeah, so I started Chicago Latina Moms like five and a half years ago, and I became a doula um, probably four years ago, so a little bit after that process. Um, and I was when I was really starting to do births, I was pregnant with my second son, so that was kind of really interesting to, you know, do the training and then become pregnant and then be a doula and be pregnant. So that was that was interesting and fun. Yeah, and before we continue, I know that. Like being, or I feel like when I was pregnant with my kids, I didn't even know what a doula was or like that this profession even existed. So can you tell us what a doula is? Yeah, I think that's a great question because I think that people don't know what their options are. We just uh, associate like um, birth with like hospitals and doctors right and actually you have uh two options you you know can have a midwife who is like a very highly trained um nurse specific for birth and um or an OBGYN. um and anyway when you have a midwife you have an OBGYN. and so when you work with a midwife they're really good with working with doulas 
And so when I was pregnant, I went with um, midwifery practice and then they were like, oh, are you gonna have a doula? And I said, oh, what is that? And so the easiest way to explain it is uh, midwives and doctors, they do the medical things. They check your blood pressure. They check how dilated you are. They handle what is happening in the pregnancy, making sure you and your baby are okay. The doula is like the person in between you and the healthcare provider. So any questions that you might have about, you know, is this normal? Is this weird? What should I do about this? Like you can't, you know, call your doctor's office with every question that you have, but you can have a doula answer all of those questions. So they're that companion with you throughout birth. They're that person that doesn't leave the hospital room. Yeah. Oh, that would be so helpful. <laughs> I feel like I wish I would have known for when I had kids. I feel like when you are pregnant, like it's such a scary time. And especially like coming from a Latina family, mm -hmm. like I know my family can have a ton of input. Like mm -hmm. there's so many suggestions and the the tias come out mm -hmm. and the my oh, sisters, <laughs> yes. Uh, and it's so hard to navigate, to be mm -hmm. able to uh, maybe like think through what you and your partner want mm -hmm. for your own family, but also being respectful and wanting to listen and make sure everyone else is happy. Uh, so it's really good to have that middle person mm -hmm. who's on your side and is willing to listen to you and kind of communicate mm -hmm. when you can't mm -hmm. communicate. I think um, like a, a well, an, another way to, to say that, like as a doula is that I'm like that neutral safe person like yeah you know I I've had my babies I've had my experience yeah. you know like and so whatever it is that you want like I've had families who you know we, we we do classes we work to do breastfeeding and then when I've come and visit they're like you know what we need to make the change to formula feeding and it's like okay let's make sure that you know we we make you as successful as possible in that so my goal is for you to be successful whatever that looks like every family is different and has unique needs and so like as a doula our job is to be the supportive person and to help you accomplish whatever your goals are, even if they switch in the middle of labor, you know, yeah. in the middle of the postpartum period, like life, that's life, right? And so we're like that safe um, information and, and emotional space for you to, to be, you know, as empowered as you can during your birthing and parenting experience. Yeah, oh, that's so beautiful. Um, <laughs> Can you walk me through, like, from when you first had that, like, oh, I think I should be, like, in this, this profession, or from then, like, actually taking on a first client, and then, like, can you walk me through from when you first started to now? Oh, yeah, it's kind of intense. Um, so, because of Chicago Latino Moms, I was, and so, maybe, maybe backtrack a little bit my son was born at 35 my first was born at 35 weeks and so it was a very stressful time and I had to learn a lot of things in the moment you know and during a lot of stress and so um you know after I kind of got past all of that and you know families in our community or friends of friends were, were struggling I was the one that they were saying like can you help my friend she's having a hard time breastfeeding or you know, I'm going to have a baby and I know you did it unmedicated. Can you give me your tips and help me? And, you know, I would have like moms messaging me while they were at the hospital in labor and I was trying to do with them, um, you know, and I was just yeah. like, oh, I just feel like I would be so much more effective if I was there. And, you know, and the way that I describe labor and my uh, my role and a partner's role in supporting is like it's a, if someone is running a marathon when they're at the 20 mark you're not like oh you did great you already did 20 miles like just sit down you, you, you know you're doing great that's enough for today right like no you want to see them succeed you have yeah. 6.2 miles left and you know here's some water here's a protein bar i'm gonna run a mile with you and you can do it right and so empowering a family to to do that and so i was doing it and I had, I had a doula um, in my first birth, so I was just like, I need to get, you know, trained properly, make sure I know everything. Um, and then I actually had my first client um, before I was actually trained fully. Um, and that was because um, there, was, there was a need in my community where um, a community member lost their partner in the middle of their pregnancy. And 
the whole community was trying to help because it was a family who had a business and we were all trying to help and you like bring food or do 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 you know groceries for them or whatever and i said what can i do to help i can help in this capacity as a doula so i was like hey like um I, I would love to help you during your pregnancy, just be your companion during pre pregnancy and birth and take care of them postpartum. So it was kind of like um, a very real reminder of like what it is that this work is. It's very sacred, it's very sacred work. It's very intimate and raw. It's the thin line between life and death, really. Um, and so to be very protective and supportive, it was like a very um, raw, introduction to being a doula right but it, but I'm, it was just and it was really emotional too like when i was when i you know you have to keep your cool when you're because birth is very unpredictable and a lot of stuff can happen and you have to be the one to hold the room together but you know like when i drove home i just like cried because i was like wow that was a really intense first birth for me so it was kind of um uh, really meant to to be for for me and the way that I see birth work where it's a form of, of like extent, an extension into my community yeah. and so I support a lot of Latino families yeah and I feel like that's why I like connected with you because I I can see that you put your whole heart mm -hmm. into each person that you meet and it's just like that's so important for the work that you do. Like you, they, you need to build that trust yes. and for them to feel your, your love, your peace, your, your joy, like to feel everything uh, so that they can be um, at their, at their most peaceful mm -hmm. and, and be able to trust you right. through that. Um, I, I like what you said, how you bring your, like it's very cultural what you do mm -hmm. um, and I know that your family is from Mexico and you recently did or you took a workshop in Mexico that really helped uh, this work I'd love to hear more yeah, about that so um, I every doula kind of has a, like a different like specialty right some some of them are really good cooks so they it's like you get postpartum doula with a lot of meals you know that that's great um and so my specialty is is uh, postpartum care mm -hmm. using um traditional mexican medicine um, and practice so that means sovada so it's like a like a belly womb to help um the the abdominal muscles heal for your pelvic floor to heal using hierbas like different herbs that help with um the healing of um possibly lacerations if there were any tears, yeah. um, scar tissue, um, just in general. The, the, every every birth is different, right? So understanding like what those different tools are unique to those different needs. And so um, I am a student of uh, many uh, teachers, uh, Banquetzani, um, Angeles Maite, and Tema Mercado, who is a traditional home birth midwife. And so, um, I have learned from a lot of uh, really respected women in, in in the you know traditional Mexican postpartum care uh, birth world, and yeah. so I've just constantly been learning and relearning and um, adding on to what I what my specialty is, and so. You know, and every family is different. Some people are open to it. Some people are just, you know, depending on what postpartum looks like, they just need to make sure that we, I need to make sure they're fed and, you know, rested yeah. enough. But I had a mom once who she was like, when I would come visit her, her mom was there, her husband was there. And you would think like, why do you need an extra person? And she was like, Isa, I want you to do the baños, the hierbas, the sobadas. Like that's, that's your role here. And her mom mm -hmm. did the cooking, her husband did the logistics in the house. And so that is a beautiful example of how I can support a family in their healing and in their bonding and be the, like a, a community member in that. Yeah. And also the, the midwives make fun of me because like I have a ton of rebosos that I use in labor. So like, and they all have different needs. Some of them I got from, you know, a sister doula that she went to Mexico to do her own training and she brought me back one. I have ones that my tias got me, ones that I got in Mexico. Like every time I go to Mexico, I go to the mercado and get like a new one for a different yeah. purpose. So I had a midwife once come in the room and she was like, you said you have a lot of rebosos. I was like, yeah, there's nine of them in this room, you know, and they, like I said, they all have different, um, and the way that I see it too is like, it's, it's a form of energy work too. So, um, 
it's really it's really special for me and for the families when I do get to be a doula and I get to bring in like my my traditional knowledge that I can to to help a family navigate yeah I feel like like I did not even like growing up I didn't actually know the importance of like a sobada like mm -hmm. I got them sometimes when I would go to Mexico and I wasn't feeling well but I never knew what was actually going on and recently I had the pleasure of like you gave me a sobada and like you went and you explained like the the movements and the reasons and the the whys mm -hmm. behind it and it was just so beautiful and I felt like that really tied me to my culture even more because uh, it reminded me of what my my tia used to do to me and my sister when we would go visit and we were so little like I didn't even know what was going on mm -hmm. um, I would see see things being done but it was never explained to me and so I've, I am just so grateful to you that I that I was able to get that lesson mm -hmm and to really understand. And I feel like that's so beautiful how you are tying your work into, or tying the culture, your culture into your work to serve the next generation of, of Latinas who are, parents. Who, yeah, who are parents, who can then pass that down to their, their children. Um, Cause like you said, like a lot of uh, like I am the daughter of an immigrant, so my family is also in Mexico. A lot of people here, like are, like they have their family in different countries mm -hmm. and don't have that that same connection. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I just think it's it's so beautiful how you're using. And I think like also, um, you know, being able to pass on to you, mm -hmm. you know, what a sobada is and what it looks like so that you can do it to your kids too when they have like a tummy ache or anything yeah. like that. So there's a lot of functions that, you know, the the sobada can, can help. But also for me, it's been a process of like, like I said, my dad's the only one who came here out of 12, you know, yeah. from, from Mexico. And so I have always felt like it's been like a little lonely and I always wondered like, why did my dad go back, you know? And because I just see my whole family in Mexico and it's, you know, it's lonely, you know, so it's just kind of fight, like learning the tools and knowledge that I have is like a reclaiming, you know, and a, and a relearning of something because, of, um, you know, we haven't talked about other parts of, of my life, but like I'm a very cerebral intellectual person and my, my background is in academia. So to like, you know, kind of throw myself more into just like my hands and my mm -hmm. heart is... Um, something that I have n not always felt comfortable with, but as like mm -hmm. I've as I've learned, it's it's felt like natural to me, and they call that like a like a memory DNA, where it's like it is part of who you are, you know, and like maybe for people who cook and they learn something and it just comes, se les hace fácil, you know, it's not like a struggle for them, and it's like your body tells you you are open and ready to to receive like this knowledge, whatever that may be. And so it's really um, very sacred work for me to learn what I learned and to pass it on to people. Yeah. So let's go back to your journey as a an entrepreneur. So were there any obstacles that you came across that you had to fight through? Yeah. So like when I became a doula, I also left my job in academia. That was like a nice nine to five, um, yeah. very predictable, very good boundaries. And so like making that transition to working from home, working for myself, creating my own schedule, learning boundaries, because I'm like a very give, give, give person. And my husband got to the point where he was like, okay, I'm going to ask for no working on Sundays. <laughs> so it's like, okay, Sunday is the day that I don't take any, any appointments. So like just learning that, making that transition to work for myself was, it took some time, you know, and to also have the confidence in myself and my work um, to just kind of navigate the things when you don't have protection, I guess. Like um, I, I've had like male partners of, of like clients ask me like, how old are you? And I'm like, I'm like, 
you know. Yeah, the age thing. Yeah, always, the age thing, and I'm like, question. I'm like, would a woman ever ask me that? You yeah. know. So um, it's, and it just kind of feels like very vulnerable. You know, just very vulnerable. And like I go to different hospitals, different neighborhoods that also feels very vulnerable. So it's like when you work for yourself and you're a photographer, you go all over the city too. So it's like, you know, si pasa algo, it's not like you can call somebody and be like, right. hey, can you help me out with this? You know, it's it's just uh, learning how to protect yourself, create boundaries, create schedules, all of that for, for yourself. So, you know, um, it's like, well, I'm old enough to be a mom of two, to, you know, have published, to have presented in the United, all over the United States and the UK and Mexico. So, you know, I can help you. Don't worry about my age, you know, um, and, and I'm older than everybody thinks I am too. So it's like just navigating all of that and being just a separate individual entity in a workspace. So that that's challenging. And then like, you know, just focusing, you know, and talking about CLM too is, you know, starting something that you thought was just like meeting another mom and hanging out to becoming a nonprofit has been a huge learning experience for me. I feel like I have grown a lot because of my children and that is like in parallel with my journey of growing Chicago Latina moms and just realizing like the amount of responsibility I really have and like what are my strengths and my weaknesses and like getting over my weaknesses and it's just it's it's hard because again you don't have like an oversight like you're you're the leader right and everyone's looking to you and so navigating my stuff navigating other people's personalities and and agendas and passions and learning how to motivate a team in a way in a different way like i i've led lots of teams when i worked in academia but it's just different when it's you are the sole leader so it's just been different kinds of i feel like i've been on my own and just kind of like learning how to build myself up and like try to cheerlead myself up but now i have you to cheer me on so <laughs> you always motivate me and make me feel like okay yeah i can do this you know and like i think that that's been really the huge the biggest reward for me like the journey is to just like find a community of other people who are also growing and building um and just kind of I lift someone up and they lift me back up or someone else lifts me up. And so um, it took a while to find that, but having community has absolutely like been crucial for me to kind of get over those obstacles, those hurdles and kind of come out um, stronger. Like I've, I've had someone to process the things that I've learned and to reframe the way I might have seen things and to just grow in general. So for someone who doesn't know what CLM is, <laughs> do you want to know? It's, it's, I feel like Chicago Latina Moms is an amazing resource that you started from nothing. Like it was a, mm -hmm. an idea and something that was in your heart and it has grown into an actual business and a nonprofit. But can you explain the journey from point A to yeah so like first it's just you know moms getting together at the coffee shop and you know as as the years went by i really saw the need you know i i like i no se me ocurrió, you know like that like that my need was also the community's need you know to be um with other families to learn from other i mean like being a mom anyway you're trying to learn from someone else so trying to learn like recipes or um you know just different things so and then just in general being able to have the safe space i think that's like the biggest thing is for like um we have you know moms in our group who don't speak any english we have moms in our group who don't speak any spanish we have moms who you know are the full spectrum of bilingual or multilingual and so having a space that welcomes all of that and learning that that meant having opportunities to have like family meetups, play dates, mom's night outs where we just kind of like let loose and just hang out and just get be together and just exchange um, workshops where we can learn from each other. We, we have a wealth of information in the community, you know, photographers, pediatricians, doulas, like everything, you know, and so a lot of small business owners. And so I was like more and more becoming a parent that like we need structure, we need um, a 
money basically so that we can provide more for the community and so that's what led it to become a nonprofit organization and so you know as we've been building to that we have had uh, community members be able to sponsor our events which allowed us to you know have opportunities for families to come together um, you know, and you and I did that uh, Chicago Latino Moms Retreat and, you know, people were really so just so grateful and it's just moments like that where you see like, wow, there is a very big need. And so as Chicago Latino Moms, we recognize being a mom is hard, you know, it's, you know, mommy guilt or shaming or, you know, people telling you what's the best thing for your family and, you know, navigating all of that. Um, just the, the isolation that you can a lot of people feel and on top of that we know what it's like to be people of color to be women of color and the things that come with that marginalization racism discrimination in in you know our communities in our schools in our workplace and so Chicago Latina Moms is that safe space where we can where we are inclusive and it's like our little bubble you know and it's just like here is a space that you are protected whatever questions that you have, you know, we welcome them and, and just empower each other and support each other and give you the tools to be successful. And also for moms who are entrepreneurs to support them. So putting our money back into our community and supporting, you know, it's like, well, if you're going to, we're all having fiestas and we need pasteles and globos and all that stuff. It's like, well, here's a balloon lady and here's a cake lady and here's a mom who does like custom t-shirts. And then like, so these are things that, you know, you are already, you know, putting your money into, why don't you do it to also support another Latina mom? Because we know that you when you support a Latina mom, you support a Latino family. So, yeah. I feel like that is one of the reasons that I have uh, stayed and like connected with you and stayed in the group. Because I, there's so many groups out there. It's like moms who do this or moms who do that. But there wasn't a space for just Latinas to support each other in all areas of life, whether that it is business or being moms or uh, rate, like raising their kids, like schooling options. Like there wasn't a space until I found that group. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't, I don't know if I, I've told you, but uh, I, I joined like maybe a year and a half ago and before then, like I came from the wedding industry and I grew up in the suburbs. And so that's all I knew. And the people that I chose to do business with were, were either friends that I grew up with or people in the wedding industry. Mm -hmm. And when I started meeting other Latina women that were also moms and I realized that, oh, there's a makeup artist here or there's a hairstylist, like, let me go support them because uh, like it's just so important to, like you said, put the money back into other people who are just like you, who are raising kids and trying to build their own business or pursue their own passion. Mm -hmm. And so I was just so thankful to meet the network of, of women through the Chicago Latina Moms. And it's just such a powerful, powerful group. Um, yeah, I feel like, I don't know, I, 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 I feel so proud, bro. like, and I know I wasn't with you, like, in the beginning, but as soon as I met you, and then, like, saw your passion and your heart behind the story, I was like, yes, this is so, <laughs> like, she is, like I said, motivated by your heart and connecting other people and elevating them, uh, no matter where they're, they are in their, in their journey as a mom or a woman. Because even though we have kids, like that doesn't mean that who we were before kids mm -hmm. just goes away. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you become a mom, like you lose that and you forget. Mm -hmm. And I just- it's, it's kind of like a, like a, like a little bit of a shedding to rebuild, you know? Cause like, yeah, when you, and that's sure, like yeah. as a doula too, that I try to help people, like things will be different. Like we, I have to prepare you for that, that things will be different. It is a transition for everyone involved when a family grows, right? And so lose, like you will lose a little bit of part of yourself in order to find a different part of yourself. And maybe that's, you know, if you worked out, you find that you work out, but that 
you recognized a need, you know, and um, now you're an entrepreneur who help other moms work out because you saw that, you know, so it's like you, you gain something more when you go through that big transition of becoming a parent, right? And so, uh, and you know, you and I talk a lot about making sure that we follow our passions because our children are watching. I know that's a phrase that you say a lot yes. and I love it because I do, you know, when I found out, you know, my, I'm very close to my family, but I found out, um, and I knew how my grandfather passed away. I found out like five years ago, three years ago, uh, that he passed away helping a family in need. He was like setting up their electricity. My, you know, I was like a poor pueblito, and so they were setting up the electricity, and he was electrocuted, and he passed away. And when I learned that, I was like, oh my god, he gave his life while helping other another family, and I'm, <laughs> it kind of felt like. I understood my life and the way I, I kind of see things too. I'm very community community oriented. Like I'm just trying to connect people with people and just very family oriented and just trying to be of service to other people as much as possible. And then I see like this story with my grandfather. He helped build the local school. My abuelita was like very involved in like the local church. So it's just kind of like, oh my gosh, like it's like in, it's part of who we are, right? And so if we're like kind of, making ourselves smaller in order to have the house perfectly clean or whatever or make lunches with their like cute little heart star and star shapes you know and pinterest lunches you know and it's just like is that who you are right and um because that is the gift that really we pass down to our children is like that you know you know see si, o cuando me pasa algo like my children are gonna look at what i've done and then they'll see what my abuelito has done and they'll be like, this is, this is part of who I am too, you know? And so, um, but we have to be that example for them. And so that's kind of how, how I, you know, I, another reason why I think you and I get along so well, because we see that like, we have to nourish those things about ourselves in order to be at that example for our kids. For those who don't know you, where can people find more info? Where can they follow you? Give us all the details. Yeah. So my name is Isabel Gonzalez Smith. Um, you can find me as the doula under the name La Luna Doula. Um, and I practice all over in Chicago. And for Chicago Latina Moms, you can find us at ChicagoLatinaMoms.com. Join our Facebook community group. You just find Chicago Latina Moms. There's a public page and a private group. So that's what you, that's what you want to join to be part of the discussions. Yeah, and it's such a good group yeah. to be a part of. Yeah. All right, so if you like this video, if you like the content, I encourage you to subscribe or just share. Share with someone who you think could use the encouragement, the inspiration, and thank you for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this chat with Isa. You can find all her information on our website, elevatinglacultura.com. And like I said in the interview, if you enjoy this conversation, please share or send me a DM. I always like to hear from people and how they resonated with the stories that I share. So go enjoy the rest of your day, your afternoon, your evening, whenever you're listening. Y nos vemos next week.